So I don't think anybody is going to disagree with me when I say that cycles produces better results than EV in the majority of cases. And I know that EV is good and it can produce some results that are indistinguishable between cycles and EV, but I think we all agree that cycles is generally better. But it's bloody slow, and that is the biggest problem with cycles, is that the speed really does limit what you can do by yourself on a home PC with when it comes to like an animation you know you could spend literally days rendering depending on your scene to make any kind of animation and let's face it nobody wants to spend days rendering we just want the stuff we just want things to be done we want to see our beautiful animation we want to see the fruits of our labors so what can you do? So this is a kind of cool trick that I found where you combine the speed of EV and the quality of cycles. Now, this is very, very specific in situations. It's not going to work for everything. So don't, don't misunderstand the aim of this tutorial. It's something that you probably were not aware of that you can utilize to your advantage. And the general idea behind this is that you render different things and composite them together. So let me explain. Now I've made this scene. Here we go. And we're currently in cycles and we can already see even the preview is just gorgeous. Um, it's, it's nothing exciting. It's just a, a little statue, a, a lump of dirt, I guess on a backdrop. Um, and I also have a, a particle emitter that's hidden currently. Let me just, there we go. I've, I've just baked this particle emitter into it. So there we go. We can see, bum, bum, bum. It's just a crazy little scene for an example. Now, let's say, for example, we wanted to render this as animation and the camera, everything's static. So the camera like this is not moving. Um, if we were to render all 500 of those frames, it would take a lifetime. Well, not a lifetime. It would it would take a long time. Each frame renders about nine seconds. No, so nine seconds, nine minutes per frame. And so if we have 24 seconds at nine minutes, that's 216 minutes per second. So that works out at 3.6 hours per second of footage which is ridiculous. There's no way that I'm going to make a silly animation like that for 36 hours for a 10 second clip. It's not going to happen. So what is the solution? The solution is view layers. I think these used to be known as render layers back when I started doing Blender. And the idea with this is that you specify things as different layers and you render only those specific things, and then you composite them back together. So what you can actually do is you can render something in cycles and then render the rest of it in EV. So the plan here, and this is just an example, you, you know, find your own application for this, but basically I'm going to render this scene without the particles and I'm going to render the particles separately in Eevee. So to begin with, the setup of the scene. Okay, so as I've explained, basic stuff. Let's get rid of the particles to begin with. So we uncheck this box. This is up here. If it's not checked, you need to come into the filter. And then this is the exclude from view layer. Okay. We also need to add on this one here. This is the holdout filter. So those are the things you need to enable if you don't have those enabled. So first of all, we untick that. <clears throat> so I've got my the rest of my scene. So I've got my scene. These are the trees, the ground, the statue, the backdrop. So let me just show you. Everything disappears. Okay, this is just my tree. This is my collection for the particle system. So I guess we can get rid of that one. We don't really need it, whatever. It makes no difference. Um and this studio collection, this is just the, the light and the camera. 
Okay. And the view layer settings are set down here. So the view layer properties used for rendering. Cycles, GPU. Let's get this rendered. Okay, so here is the render. So this one's taken, let's call it six minutes, just for the sake of argument. And it's a nice render. I mean, it's not, it's a terrible model, it's a terrible scene, it's, but it's a, it's a nice render. We like it. But it's, it's taken six minutes to render. Now, if we wanted to like dump a load of particles into this and re-render it, it's gonna take, you know, at least six minutes per frame and blah, 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 right? Okay, so. Let's just say we're going to keep this static and render just the particles. What do we need to do? So up here, you've probably never even looked at this before. This is the view layer. So what you actually want to do is you click on this here and then go to blank. I, I like blank, right? That's what I go for blank, right? And then it, it'll make you a new view layer. So this is what it will look like when you first when you first like create this view layer. And what you can do is you can you can enable everything again. So you've got your preview, your rendering your camera, and this holdout, this is where the magic happens. And this is this is a really this is the reason why you like separate things into the different scenes. So if you click on this holdout button here, everything within this scene disappears and it leaves you with everything else. So we've got here, in fact, yeah, look, you can, so you can still see the silhouette of it there. And if we zoom in, we can see the monkey. Yeah. And everything behind the monkey is cut off. So this is like a stencil. So it's, so it'll render everything but it will not render these sections. It just cuts off. It's like the, the output is not rendering. Um, and if we, if we move like around here, it'll still render things that are in front of it. So between the camera and the objects, it'll still render, but anything that's behind, it won't render. You can see things disappearing behind that. So what you can then do is you need to make sure you've got your settings, right? Cause you don't want to be wasting compute power. So if you go to your environment and you see this view layer here, if you uncheck that, because you're working on the basis that you've already rendered that, you know what that looks like. No problem, right? Come across to your particles again, and we can, you need to have the scene enabled because otherwise it's going to, not like cut it out. Um, but just as long as you've got this holdout selected, you're fine. Um, you need your studio for the lights. So if you, if you disable that, you can see the lights go off, blah, blah, blah. Right. So we've got the use for rendering on this one. Then all we can do is come to cycles, change that to EV. There's not a lot of change in it to tell you the truth, but then you can render this out. So the one, one thing you need to make sure of is you need to come into your render layers in your compositor. So you've got your render layers and then you composite. And then you need to make sure that it's on your particles. Otherwise it won't, won't show you get a little bit confused. So particles. And then if we render this again, so you can see how quickly that was. That's not 0.44 seconds to render all of these. And just to, as a comparison, just so, just so you're aware. So this is our slot one. So that's the environment that we rendered. And these are the particles. So this, this was actually rendered in, in cycles. Um, that took five points, like six, six minutes total. I'll render this separately actually on in cycles, just so we can see, uh, slot two composite, not 0.44. Can we, can we even see like a difference between these two? It's very, very slight. It is incredibly slight. Can you see there's like a few, 
like a slight difference in the color. There's barely anything. <clears throat> but you can see that it's cut out. And so what you can do is you can actually render this whole animation just as this. So let's do that. So there we go, I just did 120 frames. So once you've rendered out all of your sequence, what you can now do is you can bring all this into DaVinci, right? So you start off, you wanna like pop this as the background. Okay. So it's doing nothing. Now what you can do is you can bring in the animation. And see, you see how seamlessly it fits inside overlays you you wouldn't be able to tell the difference you wouldn't have known that that wasn't rendered at the same time well you might do experts probably would but how cool is that and that literally took seconds to render so instead of spending days in you know days and days rendering something you could do it in 20 minutes, half an hour. It's so much faster if, if that's the kind of movement that you're looking for. So yeah, that is, that's pretty much the long and short of how to use render layers or view layers in Blender. Um, and you're not limited to just doing this in, in Eevee. You could, you could do this in cycles. You could do this in cycles. So if, if you went back and changed over to cycles to render this, let's just see how long it's going to take. I just want to make sure I'm not rendering too. Right, so that one's not rendering. Good. So rendering just one random frame from the particles, but in cycles, only took 37 seconds. So it's something to think about. You know, can you get away with rendering one thing separately? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have found this useful, then please do hit that like button. Leave me any comments if there's anything that you want to contribute or add to this discussion and maybe hit that subscribe button. If this is the kind of content that you're interested in, I will try my best to do better in the future.